How's it? Welcome back to the channel. So I thought I'd talk a bit about tips for being able to go to sleep earlier, right? Go to sleep earlier, have more sleep, therefore have exponentially more dreams because the longer we sleep, we spend more of that 90-ish minute sleep cycle chunk in RAM and therefore can really aid your dream work practice. And this actually came up because some random things my kids and I were doing the other night that really had us all just ready to fall asleep way earlier than we typically do. Um, but also at the end of this video, I'll put in something that's pretty much totally off topic, but I'll throw it in here because I had a question come in about the post I put up yesterday wanting me to go more in depth into it. And that is what hypnagogic dreams are. Now that's something I've covered many times on the channel, but I got such a big backlog of videos that it could be hard to, you know, search through and find a particular video you want to find. So I'll put that in at the end and then all the rest of the videos in this particular series will be about just tips for being able to sleep earlier in the night. So um, the first tip is, and this could be honestly a kind of hard one to do, but I think if you actually do it, you'll find that you will be ready to sleep way earlier than you typically do. So this came up because um, the other night my wife was at work. She comes home like, you know, about 20, 30 minutes after the kid's typical bedtime at eight o'clock. So we came home a little bit late. The sun was still up, but it was starting to go down. Um, we had the cold plunge and stuff set up outside. So we're out there playing in the back inside the water. Then by the time we went into the house, the sun was totally down. You know, everything in the house was already off. So it was just like pretty much, you know, getting pitch black up in there. And then my kids wanted to play like, um, they've been playing the new, um, well, not the new, but there were the most recent uh, Ghostbusters game. It came out for free on PlayStation Plus. So we've downloaded it. The kids have been playing a bunch of Ghostbusters. So they wanted to run around the house in the dark with flashlights and backpacks like their proton packs and, you know, do all this Ghostbusting shit around the house. So we're doing that. Before you know it, it's creeping up to 8 p.m. It's their bedtime. So I'm getting them ready for bed. Everything in the house is still completely off. But then again, also all the doors are open. The animals are out. So obviously, you know, somebody is home. Plus my car is outside, of course. And then we're thinking, oh, you know, since mama should be home pretty soon, we should just hide out in the dark and then try and scare her, freak her out when, when she comes home. So um, we're inside the room. We're playing around. She ends up coming home a little bit later than normal. So we're actually, we're like lying in bed in the room in this pitch black darkness. But it's been, you know, by this point, totally dark for like an hour and a half, two hours that we've been in the house. And man, I just found, at least for myself, that I was like, you know, I'm getting really kind of kind of tired here. I feel like I'm totally ready to sleep and then even my two boys who will typically stay up you know we'll put them in the bedroom around eight and they don't fall asleep till like 9 15 9 30 but then by the time my wife came home at like 8 30 they were both totally conked out and passed out which um I think just really highlights how having all this artificial light around in the house of course really does kind of mess with our internal body clocks and our melatonin and really does make it kind of harder to fall asleep so it might be hard to, you know, have like no TV on, nothing in that span of time. But I think if you just really were to kill all the lights in the house, just have the bare minimum stuff you need on. And maybe if you have a TV, like we have this fucking humongous, like 85 inch TV. So maybe if you want to watch TV because it has so much bright blue light blasting into your eyeballs, maybe don't watch it on there. Because throughout this time, I was kind of watching my phone some and doing some things like that, especially as my kids were just kind of like playing with each other in a room and I'm over there just killing time in the darkness waiting for my wife to show up but it really was a it was a huge difference i was even talking to um the, the older son was telling me it's like man I'm, I'm really tired i'm feeling sleepy and i was like yeah i think it's because you know all the lights and everything in the house is just totally turned off so tip number one might be a hard one but i'll bring up some stuff later on that you can kind of link up to this first tip here of keeping everything off in the house totally dark to help you fall asleep earlier so um i'll cover that in the next video or two that'll be coming up but um to go on to the um, kind of side topic what I was going to cover in this video, which is the hypnagogic dreams or hypnagogia. So all that really is, is just stage one of sleep stuff, right? So these mental images and stuff that we're seeing in stage one of sleep is basically just hypnagogic images. Um, if you don't know, like a, like a good kind of hallmark of stage one is a lot of times we have people in a lab and they can tell this by dominant brain waves. The dominant brain wave there right now is escaping me at the moment, but point is if you're in a lab you have these EEGs hooked up to your head they will literally know when you are in stage one and when you're not and one of the hallmarks of this stage one is if somebody was to quote unquote wake you up in this state a lot of times a person who was in stage one would report back ah oh, you know like I wasn't actually asleep yet but you know like why'd you wake me up because you know they were lost in all these hypnagogic images and we passed through hypnagogia unlike some of the other sleep stages 
basically every time you're coming up out of sleep and going back into it where some of the other stages like stages three four deep sleep where you have the slowest brain waves that typically only happens in like the first two cycles of sleep so it's not something you pass through every single time like once you get past the first three hours or so of sleep then you just go from like stage one into stage two in REM right and then you just kind of and after REM you come up through hypnopompia which you know as you're rising up out of the dream and the dream's breaking down you go through a state that's very similar to hypnagogia but it's just called hypnopompia but experientially wise they're very similar so all liminal dreams are which is another word I, I use for it are also um hypnagogic images or hypnagogic dreams or also talk about it as hypnagogic meditation but hypnagogic the hypnagogia state is just that stage one area then when i talk about hypnagogic meditation i'm talking about getting to that area while consciously aware or you know having your your um, lucidity intact so you can learn to play in and explore this you know stage one liminal space and then a lot of those same muscles that you're using to work and playing in there can directly lead to um, helping you out in a classic REM style dream. So uh, for the person to ask the question, that is what um, hypnagogic dreams are. And of course, if anyone else has any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. But aside from that, after this, we'll get back to just the um, a couple videos on just different um, tips you can do for sleeping, trying to fall asleep early in the night so you can have you know more sleep and therefore more dreams and then also therefore help your dream work practice.